Good morning, friends. Well, for some of you, it may not be morning, but for me, it is still morning. So good morning, everybody. Hope you are having a fantastic day. I, uh, I'm going to give everybody a second to get on here, chat a little bit, tell you guys what, what's in store for the day. Um, I am very, very, very excited to be doing this in a broader sense. So for those of you who are new to me, my face, maybe you are familiar with my my partner, Mr. RJ Bates the third there. Um, I'll give you guys a little bit of an introduction saying, hey, just so you guys know, um, if you are on Facebook, if you're watching on Facebook and you don't, um, you don't register with StreamYard, it just says Facebook user. So speaking of the comments, we've got a lot in store today. I, uh, I've not ever done this on like a public basis. And by public basis, I mean, I have been teaching this, training our, our team, our students um, or trainees or however you want to word that for years and years and years. Uh, I, have, I have taught people comps and underwriting for nationwide uh, wholesaling for, for years now. Um, and this is one of the more complicated things to, to teach, guys. I, I don't do it on a public basis because this can take a lot of time, a lot of hours, and there's going to be a lot of questions for people who aren't familiar with the process. And then there's people who are familiar with the process, and they, they still don't quite know how to do this. Um, especially in the time frame that, that we do it, that we're teaching people to be able to do this while on the phone with a seller in a general uh, way so that they can do it quickly, right? So this is a format that's been, you know, that's come from that pain. So that's what we're going to be focused on today. So with that being said, uh, if you're newer in the industry, you can highly benefit from this. If you have been doing this for years and years and years, you can highly benefit from this. Taught agents how, how this is done. And um, we're going to be aiming to comp and underwrite today in a way that matches up with what we're putting out there with the closers formula. This is how we do this while we're on the phone with sellers. So I will not be teaching you um, how your lender is going to underwrite, <laughs> just like I won't be teaching you how your contractor's going to write up a scope of work <laughs> for your rehab amount. Um, things like that. We're going to be, we're going to be focused on how to get to, how to get to that, that sweet spot, that number while considering where your end buyers buy today and, and how important it is to come up with um, that ARV or after repair value and how important it is to consider where your end buyers need to buy. So when it comes to the comments, I love your comments. I want your comments. I want your support. I want it to be fired up. I want to know if this is helping you, if this is working for you. However, if I pay attention to all those comments for this whole thing, this will take eight years <laughs> for me to do. So don't be offended if I don't read your comment until the end. Don't be offended if I don't answer your question until the end. God willing, I have some support from uh, my various team members in the comments today because um, I'm just going to be honest with you. If I get too, too, too inundated in those comments, then I uh, I will tend to not be able to teach as much on, on this particular kind of uh, session, if you will. So um, now that I've given everybody a little bit of a chance to get on here, I am going to go through a few of the comments. I want to make sure that good morning, Facebook users. Um, I'm so glad. Good morning, homie, Mr. Jamie LeBlanc. Um, good morning, Mr. Robert Blaine, <laughs> my number one fan. Um, 
I'm very, very, very excited to uh, have you guys here and to work with you and teach you how we do things here at Titanium. Um, oh, my sweets. I'm very grateful to be here as well. I want you guys to know that. All hail the queen. That's my guy. <laughs> See, I will get I will get buried in these comments. So just so you guys know, um, ooh, lots of lots of people tagged, lots of people that will probably be joining. I am going to try to go as long as this takes for me to get you guys the general um, knowledge in here, uh, the practicum, if you will and get you a great view of how we do this. And um, you will have to, you know, stick with it. Stick with it because it's a comprehensive thing and I want to I want to break it down for you guys in a way that helps you genuinely understand how we do that quick underwriting, that quick comping process uh, while on the phone with the sellers. So, if you guys have not paid attention to the lives that RJ is doing, um, the closers formula stuff and watching those videos that he has been putting out, he's been putting out like weekly on Tuesdays and showing you guys, you know, in this free group, how he does that for years. People have been talking about how, you know, he's the king closer and he is, or he, as he's, he's adopted saying, we're the king closer. <laughs> so the reason for that guys is because we do have a, an entire process behind this. Right. And we teach teams across the country, um, how to go virtual and how to go nationwide, if you will. Um, or into markets outside of their home base, right? And it's so important that when you are doing this virtually, aka you are doing this from a desk, you are not at the property, you're not, you know, calling a seller and getting an appraisal right then and there, right? Um, that you need to know how to comp in a way that you can get the number, right? Now, I want to go ahead and preface this entire thing by saying you will not be exact on the ARV. You will not be exact on the rehab. You will not know where every buyer's interest rates points, if they're getting a hard money loan, if they are um, paying a realtor a flat fee, if they're a buyer like me. I don't have to pay a realtor because I have a license. I have a very minimal fee to list a property. Um, you don't know what every cost for every buyer is, just like you don't know what every lender or what types of loans are going to have. You need to understand what the best plan is for this property, and you need to be able to do it in a very quick way. So this process that I'm about to show you guys was built from comping and underwriting. God knows how many, it's probably many hundreds of thousands of properties at this point. Um, this was born from us flipping properties, right? So what we are going to be focused on right here is, um, and I'll just give you guys an example. One of the comps that I'm going to run later, right? When we ran the preliminary comps, we put a $290,000 ARV, right? And we put, I don't know, $70,000 in rehab, something to that effect. Um, the buyer that ended up buying that property, you know, I believe they had said, well, you know, their contractor came back with $80,000. And so, you know, they needed to be at this number. And I think, on that specific one, um, we did have to, we didn't have like a, a huge wholesale fee built into it. So, um, because we wanted it to make sense for the seller and their needs, we needed it to make sense for our end buyer and we needed it to make sense for us. Right. 
And so we comped this property. Our preliminary numbers were like two ninety and then seventy thousand dollars for rehab. Our buyer came back and said, "This is actually going to take eighty thousand dollars. Here's why. This was something that was unknown to us. We went back. We talked to the seller. We lowered our fee a little bit. They lowered their price a little bit. It worked out for everybody. That property is now remodeled and it is listed for eight thousand dollars more." than that $290,000 ARV, right? So their agent ended up thinking that this property should be listed for 298, okay? So that was their choice. And I hope they get that $298,000 offer. I'm not tripping about the difference. Um, you're not gonna have everything perfect. So uh, when I go over the profit calculator, I want you guys to understand that it is built to fill in four boxes and for you to hit a range. On the ARV, I want you to understand that it is meant to hit a range. If you're $50,000 off, sure, that's gonna skew the numbers by quite a bit you know, for every one of the things, right? If you're severely low on the rehab because you don't really understand one of the mistakes that most people in this industry make is that they try to cherry pick and pick the highest comp possible. They're not looking at comps like an appraiser is going to pull. You need to understand that most people don't consider that they end up having a blueprint property, AKA that ARV is coming from this market data says, if you make your subject property look like this property, you need to put X amount of dollars into it. So people try to do a very low rehab number and they try to pick that very high ARV, right? They're not considering that in order to make your subject property look like that ARV, you're gonna have to put a lot more than in rehab in it. And those are the biggest mistakes. If there's one thing that you take away from this and you're not seeing your properties move or you're not sure uh, what to put on those numbers, those are things that you really need to hone in on. So I'm going to preface the profit calculator and I'm going to preface the comping by understanding, I want you guys to understand that we're very particular on making sure that we are not trying to manufacture a deal based on what the seller is asking for the property. So in the closer's formula, this is one of the reasons the path of the math is that you are telling the seller, these are my pain points as the buyer. This, if you're Mr. and Mrs. Seller saying, if I fix this property up, it'll be worth $200,000. And you think that $20,000 is going to cut it. When I need to update the entire interior of the home, what you don't understand is that for most buyers, and in that case, probably all buyers, if I'm giving that example, uh, aren't going to be able to do that for 20000 It's X amount of square feet. I've got to update the interior, but there's no mechanical issues. There's no majors that need worked on. I'm still going to probably need about forty five grand to do that in, the, in today's market, the cost of materials and labor. Um, and you guys need to understand too that, you know, and I'll, and I'll dive into this and show you guys the profit calculator that, uh, if I send three contractors out, uh, with a scope of work, I'm going to get three numbers back. Okay. So I'm going to preface today by saying, I am going to be building you guys out the path that which we do this on that live seller call, but I am not going to be saying that if you are a couple thousand dollars off that you are not going to land in what we're going to start calling the web, where end buyers buy. You're trying to land at that number. So keep in mind that this process is trying to land in the web. Okay. And keep in mind that this process goes hand in hand with the closers formula. Okay, this is how we do things and this is how we achieve those results. Honestly, part of the reason, guys, I have not gone on a broad platform or a more public platform in teaching this stuff is because um, 
it is a little bit more trying and complicated, but the reality of it is, is a lot of people, and I appreciate your guys' support so much. I want you guys to know that for all of those that commented with that GIF, I call it GIF. Some people call it GIF. It's a GIF. It's a G to me. Um, when all you guys did that, I'm so fired up. I'm so excited that there's such like people are realizing there's such a need for this in today's market. I'm so excited that, you know, people are starting to embrace this because in the past, it's not been seen as the most sexy topic. You know, it's not the sexy part of the closers formula. It's the hard part, right? It's the, it's the part that takes so much repetition to be able to master this. And I understand that. So, um, this is the first time that I, that I have gone public, uh, on a, on a public, a more public platform doing this. So I want you guys to know that, that I am very excited that we're seeing such a need for this and people calling for this because, Historically speaking, you know, we've been doing this for about 10 years and we've not seen a lot of people, um, you know, there've been a lot of people who are newer wholesalers or newer to real estate investing or flipping or whatever. And, you know, they are working in those models where it's like, well, in this market, I can run numbers at 80% of the ARV minus repairs and, uh, offer to this seller and throw it out there and buyers are going to come. And there was madness because the way that property values were rising for a period of time, um, a lot of newer people to the industry didn't understand that that's why they were getting away with not really mastering this part of the process. Right. Um, because, Heck, by the time we would flip a property and get it on the market, it was people were just beating down the doors for it. You know, um, people were waving appraisal contingencies and all this stuff. That is not what's going on in today's market. You have to know the math. You have to know how to comp. You can't just cherry pick comps or try to manufacture deals. You can't just throw that at it and expect buyers to be knocking down your door. Um, you actually have to understand where they, where they're buying now and why they're buying and what their costs are. So I'm going to go through some comp rules. I'm going to dig in to some more and the queen of dispo Thank you. I, you know, what's so funny about that? I love that you say that because the truth is I am the queen of dispo, <laughs> but not a lot of people know that Facebook user Whitney and I are here and ready. That must be my guy, Michael and his beautiful wife, Whitney. I'm so excited to have you guys here. Whew. I'm loving these comments. Um, I just want you guys to know, I love that you're, um, entering in some properties and, you know, you want help. Oh, thank you. Let's go and get me some coffee, maybe cover my second energy drink for today. It's raining here in Fort Worth, Texas. It's a beautiful day and I'm, in, I'm in love with it, but you know, I got to keep this energy up for y'all. You will be able to comp your address while watching the process. Cassie is teaching you today. If not, we'll help you get it done. I love it. Oh my gosh. I love you guys. The non-sexy part is usually the most important part. That is such a fact. I am so excited to be doing this. Um, yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, energy is everything. You're absolutely right. This part, especially in today's market, will absolutely make or break your business. It will absolutely determine, you know, if you find yourself, you know, if you've been doing this for a couple of years and all of a sudden with the market shifts, the economy shifts, da -da 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 -da, your volume is going down. You're running numbers the same way. You're starting to drop deals. You're doing that 70% of the ARV. I hear a lot of people sitting there telling me, you know, well, we'll just offer 50% of the ARV because, you know, I don't want to have to figure out how to do rehab numbers and I don't want to have to figure out, you know, blah, 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 blah. And that should cover it. Right. And it's like, 
I, I may get enough time to, in here to show you side by side on that profit calculator why that doesn't work. I'm going to try to fit that in um, because so many people don't realize that because of that property, because of that rehab, because of not considering any buyer's cost. So you're trying to narrow the buyer's pool so much that you're trying to find a needle in a haystack and you're like, just because one buyer happened to buy 80% of the ARV, you're not going to keep finding people to do that. Not in today's world. And realistically, we didn't run our business like that, but I'll just give you guys some examples. You know, we saw somebody and I'm going to show this on the profit calculator. Uh, we saw somebody that in our market, you know, we're DFW and they had entered in you know, a property that they had had. I didn't run the comps, but they had had the ARV at 320, said it needed an interior cosmetic uh, rehab. I think it was about 21 or 2200 square feet. Interior cosmetic rehab, put it at 35,000. They need everything updated interior. And they were trying to sell it for like $230,000. And I'm just going to let you know, I just read those numbers. And this is where I want y'all to be able to get. I just read those numbers on that post. And I already know that that deal's a loss for any buyers and they're not going to move it. Right. But that might've worked for them three years ago. And they've been doing this for a few years, you know, and I'm just looking at those numbers and I'm like, Lord Jesus, nobody's going to buy that. And if you find a buyer that will buy that, like that's, that's just not going to happen in today's market. Right. Uh, the rent rate wouldn't cover what, you know, even somebody's, I mean, it just wouldn't work. There's, there's no way that that works. Right. And I see so many people in the industry and I want you guys to know before I really dive into the tactics of this, um, to the math of this, to the, the guidelines of this and how we do this in a very short process while on the phone with that seller nationwide, um, where there's a lot of differing factors, you know, property taxes are very different here than in a lot of other places in the country, right? You have to consider this is for that. As I dig into that process, you have to understand that, you know, it is a part of our mission. Like this is a part of our mission. This is a part of my mission. And this is something that the best business partner anybody could ever have in the entire world. My partner, sorry, y'all. I already got him. I had him for over a decade as my business partner and nobody else gets him. <laughs> But he's the best and he's, he has encouraged me to start going more public with, you know, trying to teach these things to you guys. And because it is a part of our mission and it is a part of our process and it is a, what can change the game for so many people, for so many businesses, for so many families. And they don't understand like they, they're, they're like those people who put that property out there at those numbers, they don't understand that they're doing it wrong. They, I have no idea what they have that under contract for, but I see people marketing properties like that, that have a huge fee built into them, you know, and I'm not going to get into dispo today, but I am going to go ahead and say, you are shooting yourself in the foot. I am a buyer in that market with that deal. And I would, if they emailed me, they text me, they called me, I wouldn't even spend my time looking at that deal. You know, you've got to understand I'm not buying a hundred properties a day and neither are your buyers. So understanding how to get into the web while on that initial seller call is your end goal after today to understand that you need to continue sharpening your skills on comping and underwriting and keep, keep, keep going and keep learning. Repeat this process over and over and over and over and over and over and over again, because this was not born overnight, right? We are trying to speed up the process for you so massively. And it's so important for you and your business. Um, and that's where these tools were born from. So I'm going to dig into it. I'm going to share a lot of great things with you guys today. 
I'm going to share as much as I possibly can into this short time frame that I'm going to have to go live today. Um, and let's get ready to rumble. So did you miss the comping? No, honey, I, I haven't been live for very long. We're just now getting into the comp rules and this is going to be, I can't believe this group is free. I, Hey, happy holidays to you, Robin. I love you. I thank you for always supporting us. Um, look guys, uh, we're trying to give you as much as we can. We're on a mission. If you can't tell, we are absolutely on a mission. Okay. So I'm going to pull this over here. I'm going to show you guys, um, doop, 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 doop. Now this is something that is the beginning of our comp process. Hope you have your pens and papers ready. This is where it starts to get nitty gritty. Let's get ready to rumble. <laughs> I would be good at that. I should practice that. <laughs> Please let RJ know that I appreciate I push Cassie into doing lives. She's so much to teach and the people need it. Oh, I love you guys. All right. So. Again, don't be mad if I don't get into your comments, if I don't comp your properties. I'm here to, look, I'm not going anywhere. I'm not playing into guys, so I'm going to be here for a long time. We got lots to do together. Okay, so I want you guys to know, first and foremost, and I probably should add these two things to the comp rules in and of themselves, but I didn't initially see them as um, comp rules necessarily. So let me get this over here. I want you guys to know that when I go to comp properties later, you're gonna see me do two things and I'm gonna do my comps today on prop stream. And there's a reason for that because the default filters are the filters that I put on every tool I use, including the MLS. If you don't know this, I am a licensed agent here in the state of Texas, proud to be so best agents you ever met. I love actually being an agent because I don't have to do it all day. Every day is probably why I still love being an agent. Um, and I got my license a couple years into this. Um, and I've learned a lot. A lot of our, our process comes from me being an agent and learning how to be an agent. I've owned my brokerage since day one and I moved to real this past year because of what it offers us with our nationwide associates, our network, my team with Steve Trang and Matthew Potter and Ryan Zolan. I'm, I'm so blessed to be a part of that. Um, but I love being an agent. And so I have tried to, um, really make a part of our process simplified. So that's where these rules come from. I say rules, we need to also change this to guidelines or guardrails, okay? Because these are guidelines and guardrails, guys, and there are outlying factors, okay? So one of the first things that you do, not one of, the first thing that I do on every comp, every time, without fail, is I right click, on that address from our CRM, from our lead. And I go to Google Street View. I look at the satellite view. I, I get in that street view. I do a 360. I turn around. I Maybe sometimes I go down a block and block and whatever. I'm looking for things that tell me I want to make this, I want to make sure this property is being comped with the factors that can play into this. Okay. And then I'll get into my filters when I get on prop stream, but I think I'm going to add those and I'm going to change that rules to guardrails because a lot of people get stuck on stuff and a lot of people make the mistakes with comps and they want to be completely inside the box or they want to think completely outside of the box. And they don't realize that this background is gray for a reason because comps is embracing the gray area, understanding the factors that you're looking at, Every rule is not going to apply to every property every time. And you've got to be able to determine what is going to make sense. 
this subject property is going to turn into this after this amount of rehab and here's why and here is the burden of proof that is what you're looking for when you're looking for comps you're looking for it from that what what is that appraisal software going to pop out right and what are those adjustments that people are looking at and sometimes there's going to be adjustments that will be on an appraisal but people forget to consider the adjustments that will be made by the market and what do i mean by that by the market means, and I'm saying this for loves of my life, okay? By the market means if you have a railroad track running up your bum right down your backyard <laughs> and your comps don't have that, you need to be paying attention. Then one of the things I will say a lot in this is one of these things is not like the other, okay? Okay. When you're on a six lane road, I will not even buy a property if it's not on a two lane road. We will not flip one of those properties. I will not buy a property if it has a railroad going down the backyard. That doesn't mean nobody will, but I want you guys to understand how much you're narrowing that buyer's pool and you have to have comps that match that. You have to have comps that match those factors. Those are factors that will be heavily adjusted by the market and you need to have your comps that have those same conditions and if you don't have those comps that have those same conditions you've got to be really 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 conservative and you've got to really do the work to see what is going on right so when i say they're guidelines and when i say the first step that you do is you look at that street view on every single time and probably why i need to put it on this should have done it before today but hey you know we're here and um when you're looking at that you've got to understand that is one of the most important things you do it's one of most important one of the most important steps okay guys and then the filters are, are very important too and um i'll get into that um when i am comping and why i adjust and when i adjust filters and Look, guys, I'm trying to teach you something in hours that normally takes us like five minutes, maybe, unless we get a complicated one, right? So I want you guys to understand that that's where these guidelines come from. A lot of the times, these factors don't play in, but some of the biggest mistakes I see being made in this, in these areas, are because people forget to consider those factors, right? Um, if there's a railroad um yeah i'm gonna answer a lot of questions guys like that uh like jaime or jane jamie i'm not sure which um i'm gonna answer a lot of questions like this at the end because this is an important question to ask you are looking for comps and that's going to be different per property there's not going to be a rule for that right is the subdivision the same you're going to have to pick and choose because there's a difference between an appraisal adjustment and a market adjustment right um it if it's not in a higher moving market i mean you've got to really consider you've got to be extra conservative um on what that market adjustment's going to be you know so um you got to leave this morning. It's a distressed house and the property was near a railroad. I'd be looking for properties in that subdivision. And, uh, you know, you're going to have to do the best you can. It, it's hard to tell without actually looking at the map. <laughs> um, but you're going to need to always try to stick to these comp rules and guidelines as best as you can. So understand also that when I do this and when I do the filters, they're kind of in order of the first things that I look at, right? So kind of in order of importance. So understand like and kind. What does that mean? We're looking for comps, which means comparable properties. And in our case, as a flipper or a wholesaler, what you're going to be looking for is the comparable property after you put rehab into it okay so you're going to be looking for what we call the blueprint property what you're going to be able to with x amount of rehab put into that property to turn it into a property that will sell for the arv so your arv could be if you're picking the highest arv possible you need to make sure that it's 100 considering enough rehab 
for you to turn it into that property. Well, if you have comps that maybe are selling for a little chunk less in that market, and they maybe don't have as many updates, but they're clean as a whistle. Maybe they still look, you know, early 2000s or things like that. Maybe you get to put less rehab in them and maybe your buyer gets to list them for lower. And I can tell you as a buyer, a lot of times I will go for that plan over, it depends on the market and the subdivision, the area, da -da 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 -da. you got to look at the comps. A lot of times I'd rather go for that plan because it's easier and faster and helps on the holding cost to sell a property and a lower price point versus the highest price point for that neighborhood, right? So you've got to keep those things in mind and understand what we're aiming for is to get into the web. We're not aiming for perfection or not aiming to cherry pick and manufacture deals. We're looking to get in the web, okay? So guardrails and um guardrails and uh get in the web keep those things in mind guys okay so like and kind by distance by distance means that you do want to stick in the subdivision if possible and you're going to consider the closest properties to that pin on the map you're going to consider those properties to be the most comparable by like and kind, a lot of these other guidelines are those things, like and kind. If I have a 3-2 brick home, square foot is 1500 do I want to try to comp it for a 900 square foot to one because the price for per square foot is justified as higher because the lower the square foot, the higher the price per square foot usually is? These are mistakes I see people making. They're like, well, my square foot is 1500 and this comp sold for 200 a square foot. Doesn't work that way, guys. That's not what appraisers do. That's not what your buyer is going to flip this house and be able to list it for. It's not realistic. So the idea is to understand and try to choose the properties that will land on that appraisal. And the idea is to also consider where you are right now. So not a lot of people look at actives. I look at actives when I look at comps. And the reason why is, is because over the past couple of years, what sold six months ago for $250,000 right now in December of 2023 might be selling for just a little bit less than that. So I want to be competitive as the buyer on the market. Okay. I want to be competitive on the market. So I don't want to have the highest possible listing on the market because what concerns me is that people are going to go choose that property that's 20 listed for $20,000 less. So you have to keep that in mind. You have to keep in mind that everything that I'm going to be showing you today is so that you can get in that web, get where the end buyer is going to buy, get the process that that end buyer is going to go through because that is also where this comes from. So, um, super duper clean account for, eh, that's an, that's an interesting question, Scott. Um, it, 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 that, and it's a very broad question. Um, but what we do and the way that we run numbers on our calculator, I'll go ahead and cover that for you. So you want to try to keep it. And this is another big thing that is a reason that you get on that map is a lot of people make the mistake of crossing over into subdivisions and even accidentally because they don't do that Google Street View as the first thing that they do. Um, it's a big pro It's a big mistake that people make when they're looking on the map on their comp tools or their comp systems is they're not realizing that they're crossing a major road. Like I've seen subdivisions cross a major road. Like it happens a lot more in Dallas than it does Fort Worth. So if you're from DFW, um, you'll understand this. Or if you guys are from a market that does this, you'll understand what I'm talking about. If you're not from a market, Usually this happens more in larger cities, but 
you'll have a subdivision and then you'll have many major roads going through it. And every section of that subdivision has kind of different price points. Um, they may be having like different, you know, subdivisions will have like different phases, you know, and you may not realize it or you may not look at that. So this is another reason why you don't want to cross major roads and you do need to pay attention to the subdivision and you do filter your stuff out and sort it by distance. Okay. So it's a big reason for a lot of these uh, guardrails. So yes, you're looking for the blueprint property. Um, can I turn my subject property into this comp and for how much? Try to keep the build years as close as possible. I will tell you guys that the older the home, the less those build years matter. Um, I will tell you one of the reasons I like to comp on PropStream is compared to other comp tools that I love. Um, and I use both of them sometimes. Like I love Batch's comp tool for it's clicking on the, those photos. The way that that's navigated helps me do that fast. And truthfully, I usually have two or three comp tools pulled up because um, I like to verify them across tools. Um, I want you guys to understand I'm also like a wizard with this, oh, a whiz kid with this, a wizard. I don't know. It's the Viking wizard thing. Um, I'm a whiz with this. You know, I do it very fast because I've done it a bajillion times, right? You know, you don't need to necessarily be at that level overnight or after this, after this live here. Um, in, and I wouldn't expect you to, but I want you guys to understand that I do verify those. And some people are gonna be like, well, I only have one comp tool or why don't you use a free comp tool or why don't you use it on Zillow? Um, I would never just comp on Zillow, but I will tell you guys this, um, recent years, not so much a few years ago. Um, sometimes I am just verifying what comps surround me on Zillow. Um, but I would never just comp on Zillow. I would never do it. Um, I, I comp properties all over the country, all day, every day. Oh, well, that's not all day, every day, what I do anymore necessarily, but I've done it for, for a lot of years. Um, I would never just stick to, to that. Um, I also understand where this data is being pulled. So, um, it gets pulled from a lot of different resources and places and, you know, some counties take forever to record stuff, you know? So, um, some, some places it's, awful pulling MLS data, you know? So, you know, you've got different places that have different little idiosyncrasies. So for us with the business that we run, we're always going to have those comp tools. We're always going to use all of them. Um, but for all intents and purposes, I do really like that the filters are pretty automatic on PropStream and you can probably in whatever comp tool you're using, if it's not PropStream, if it's batch or things like that, you um, you can actually reset your default filters to be the same. So I'll go over those filters here in a minute. Uh, da, 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 da. Let me get this clicked over. Okay, so adjustments that you guys want to be mindful for um, when you are not finding that just like my property, but it's in my neighborhood. So do I choose this one and make an adjustment? Or do I try to choose the one that's a mile and a half away? No, you don't choose the one that's a mile and a half away, you silly goose. You choose the one that's two blocks away and you make an adjustment because that's what an appraiser is going to do. And that's what the market will do too. Okay. Um, so you want to pick that one that's right in your backyard and just sold three months ago over the one a mile and a half away that sold a year ago. Okay. Um, so you do have an average price per square foot. It is where I already mentioned, or I see a lot of people screw up. Um, but an appraisal adjusts for one square foot difference. You need to understand that. And you do have a four bedroom, you know, and it sold for, and it four bedrooms in this neighborhood are selling for 10 or 15 or 20,000 more. And if you pick th those only because they're around the same square footage as a comp for your three bedroom, you're making a mistake. 
you want to you want to pick the three bedrooms first, but you want to pick the four bedrooms and make an adjustment before you go a mile away, right? So that's why these adjustments are here for these bedrooms and the bathrooms, pools and not pools. Look, these can these can be market value different, but on an appraisal, it doesn't matter. They're only going to give it so much plus or minus. That's what that's there for. So they're either only going to add so much value or take away so much value for a pool. So you also have to understand that when your buyer gets that appraisal or gets that property listed and that in, you know, their buyer gets that appraisal uh, done for the property when they have, you know, they're going through the actual lending and underwriting process that that appraisal, you know, they might have been willing to pay $40,000 more for that market for that pool, but it doesn't reflect that on the appraisal. So then what ends up happening in times like those? They either have to pay that as the buyer pay that difference from the appraised value out of pocket, or they're going to ask for a price drop. Well, unless the market's bananas, they're going to get that price reduction. Um, thanks, Scott. I appreciate you. Um, so these are market specific and you do have to pay attention when you're pulling these things. Well, you know, a lot of people are going to be like, Oh, I need to pay attention to those things. How do you guys pay attention to those things so fast? Well, a lot of practice, a lot of repetition. I always say as a joke, the reason that we know how to do this is I'm like, I know how to read the matrix. It's a joke for realtors. The only realtors or my team or my community probably gets because as an agent, the matrix, the MLS thing. And I'm like, I can read the matrix. And it's also a Matrix the movie joke. Um, I'm like Neo, basically, or Trinity. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, yeah I, it, it honestly, it, it is a honed skill. Um, but it is also something that you guys should be aiming for doing in a very quick amount of time. Um, and it is the reason why we use a lot of the the tools that we that we use because I can click through these things and go boop 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 boop. And I'm seeing it so fast. Well, for example, like Garrett, he's been with us for a year, just over a year. He recently had an anniversary with us. Um, you know, he might not pull these as fast as I do, but he does it in a really reasonable amount of time while on the phone with a seller. So you guys can do that too. Just because you can't do it in like 2.9 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> like our crazy butts who have done this a hundred bajillion times. It's an exaggeration, of course, but just because you can't do it that fast doesn't mean you can't do it. Right. And if you'll notice on the closers formula calls and RJ's live calls, and if you've seen any of my live calls, I don't have nearly as many as that guy. Um, as you will see, we will talk this out loud. We will talk, Hey, this is the process that I'm doing right now. I'm seeing this comp. I'm looking at this. Oh, they've got marble countertops. Cool. Yeah. Oh, you want to tell me about the dog run you had built out back? And um, we just listen to them while we're pulling this stuff up and going through this. So yeah, it, it takes a lot of practice to kind of master that. But just, you know, if you're newer in this, just understand that it's okay for you to take your time and do this and make sure you're covering these bases and you will get faster at it. Um, it's very, very, very possible. Um, so the things that you don't want to miss, you got to pay attention to basements. If you're not in a market with basements, you don't want to account for a uh, not finished out basement. When your comp has a finished out basement, you don't want to forget that rehab, do you? Well, you also don't want to forget that if you have to make an adjustment all your comps don't have basements that are finished out. Well, you have to make an adjustment for that. They're not worth like the first, the rest of the livable square footage. Same thing with attics. They're not worth the same amount as the rest of the livable square footage. They're worth something because they're adding livable square footage. You don't want to count that as the same price per square foot as the main original area of the home that was built, right? You got to make sure 
um, to pay attention. Uh, Johnny, I appreciate you being there. I'm not going to be running into today um, how to comp small multifamily. Um, I do get into more complicated comps, uh, buy and holds, um, things like land and more complicated and more difficult comps um, throughout our training programs. Um, you know, and maybe one day, um, depending on how much I get to go live, I can get into more complicated ones, uh, down the line as like little bonus lives <laughs> when I get there. Um, but we got a lot of stuff to, a lot of stuff to teach. So we're not starting out with those smaller multifamilies or those more difficult comps. This is to get you to where you can come fast, uh, finding the, finding the numbers that fit in the web and um, how to do the nationwide and how this goes with the closed risk formula today, okay? So um, you don't comp additions um, necessarily the same as you do the original livable square footage unless they look like they're the original livable square footage. And I actually, one of our, our community members um, and one of the guys that's coming to, you know, our, our He's come to one boot camp. He is definitely um, educating himself through our various programs. He's come into another boot camp um, that we're having in January. He's new to newer to this. Um, you know, he is you know sharpening his skills and educating himself. He ran into one of these the other day where these people had taken up the lot, the entire lot. By building back and up on top of, and it was a very small lot. So they basically had no more garage, no more yard. And they were the big man on the block, the biggest house this neighborhood had ever seen. You know, and he did actually a really good, I was really proud of him. And Bud, if you're on here, love you, mean it. Um, I am using you as the example. Um, and I think you are on here. You were earlier. Um, he did a really good job of not taking that price per square foot from the neighborhood next door that actually had like the 3000 square foot houses or something like that. Um, the closest neighborhood that had houses, those size, he did a really good job of not taking those comps, um, and trying to apply it to this neighborhood because there's no way a house would sell for that high in this neighborhood. People would not put that kind of money into a house in this neighborhood. It would have been the highest price property that had ever sold in this neighborhood. They were much newer. They were brick homes. They were this, they were that, um, you know, so additions, you've got to watch for additions. And he did a really good job of that. He didn't quite hit the uh, nail on the head with his ARV. It was a little bit high, but he still did such a great job, um, you know, being mindful of that for somebody that is newer. So one of those things that people sometimes I see making that mistake or, or keeping it in mind that, you know, there's no air conditioning. They, they converted their porch into livable square footage in their mind because they enclosed it, but it's just concrete that slopes down like this still. And, you know, things like that. A lot of times people make those mistakes and they're like, huh, the house is now. 1800 square feet and it started out at 1400 square or whatever, you know, and it's like, eh, that's not the same. That's not going to go on the market for the same price per square foot here. And was it permitted? So, um, these guidelines, um, with garage conversions, um, will kind of vary. There are neighborhoods that do these garage conversions where it fits. And if your comps have the garage, your, your comps, if they have the garage conversions, well, you're pretty solid, right? Um, if they don't, you got a problem, especially if you're here in the state of Texas where we get hail and people like trucks and they spend a lot of money on their trucks. They like to have a garage. Um, they don't want a dang old garage conversion, right? They're going to choose the house for the same square footage that has the garage over your house that has this garage conversion. I actually saw you know, somebody put out a property not that long ago and their plan was in their rehab as the flipper to convert the garage. And I was like, oof, I couldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. 
I would not do that. I could not make myself do that on a flip. I've never done it. I'll never do it. Um, I, I don't like it. It's not to say it's never worked for anybody ever. Not the best plan for me. Um, so you're going to have buyers like that too. Um, guest houses, um, that are detached. Okay. Or attached really, if it's an ADU, you know, this is not a perfect situation. If you can't find comps that have those, um, a 50% of the square foot value is a, is a general guideline you can apply if you worst case scenario, but you are looking for a comp or you are looking for a rent rate. I've seen it happen both ways on appraisals. Um, but don't make the mistake of thinking that that guest house out back, that's 250 square feet, mother-in-law, she should, whatever man cave that was added is, you know, the same price per square foot as the, the main square footage. Cause I've seen a lot of people do that. We're like, well, we have this additional unit out here and the price per square foot's 200. So that just added 200,000, whatever, how many hundred thousand dollars to this ARV and there's no other comps like this. So I comped it with a 200 square foot house. No, it's not the same. So you can't do that guys. So you gotta be mindful of that. And look, if you have some of these things that are complicated, um, you're in our community, you're in our, in our training. I always tell people, put a number on it, put a number on it, see if it makes sense, run it by the community. If you're in our training, you know, and you can get in that email, you can run it by us on the complicated ones, but you're going to need to put your numbers all together and you're going to need to try and you're going to need to figure it out. Not just say, Hey, you know, the only way you're going to get better on this guys is if you actually try to put those values in there and make them make sense. You actually got to understand what these, what these rules mean and how they apply and what they look like for your buyer on the market, what that, um, what that appraisal is going to come back looking like things like that. So without further ado, what I will now get into is the actual profit calculator. So the profit calculator, this is a lot of fun, right? Can you even believe it's free? I should have all the thumbs up. Somebody tell me how many thumbs up I got. Not, oh, I, 93 people watching this? Lord, Lord have mercy. I better have 93 thumbs ups at least. Let's go. Okay, so. <laughs> I love it when stuff comes across like this. So <laughs> because I'm in multiple platforms, I'm like, text screen, game over. I'm like, I, I have no idea what those emojis are, but I love it. I love your emojis. Okay, so I hope everybody's getting a lot of value out of this. I hope you love the comp rules, comp guidelines. Um, I hope you everybody understands where this is matching up how this is going to match up with the, with the closers formula um, and how we do this. And here is where I get into the ever so lovely little baby tool with big old power um, that is a part of our process. Okay. 50 watching 25 YouTube thumbs up. Let's go on YouTube. Elbow cough, elbow cough. Yeah. Yeah. Elbow cough is right. Okay. So I need that profit calculator. You can, one of my loves, my team, my family, my family will put the email in the comments for you, but I'm going to try to put the email in the comments for you. It's a group email. There is no dot com. RJ Bates, the third at titanium dot investments. They did a great job in building the calculator. Yes. We're going to get into the nitty gritties of the calculator. And then I'm going to try to comp a couple properties for you guys. 
applying those guidelines so I can show you. So I'm going to speed through this. The more I'm like Tinkerbell from Peter Pan. I was going to say Tink. Tinkerbell from Peter Pan. You know, if you believe every time a bell rings, an angel gets its wings. If you believe I, I shine brighter. So those thumbs up, I'm just saying, that's like a bell to an angel for me. It keeps me going. It gives me energy. I'm just saying. those. It's just kind of like those gifts. I, was, I get fired up. I love seeing the comments keeping and going and things like that. It, it gives me, it tells me that you guys are, are appreciating this. And I'm giving you value and you're learning and that gets me fired up. That's my mission, right? So I appreciate that even if I don't read those, but I got to have all the thumbs up. That's what I demand for this is, that's my payment. <laughs> all right, guys. I am uh, going to present the little tool with the big power. And I'm going to go through how it is broken down and why it is broken down the way it is broken down. Here we go. I hope you guys can see that really well. Uh, I'm going to try to actually zoom in a little bit more. that actually might help you. Okay. So we're zoomed in. We're zoomed in. I want you guys to understand. I have built out spreadsheets with all the, okay. I am a nerd y'all. I'm a lot of things. I'm a very versatile human being, but I am a nerd. And I will tell you, <laughs> my friends made fun. Like, first and foremost, I'll just get this out of the way. I did very well in school. We're not going to be tossing around GPAs, but I'm very studious. I love to learn. I'm a big nerd. I love, love, loved statistics. And everybody's like, statistics is hard. I'm like, I love statistics. I love, I love building spreadsheets. I really do. I really love it. I love the spreadsheets. I love the formulas. I love the math of what we do. I love it. I love it. Okay. I'm obsessed with it. And I became obsessed with simplifying the process for when we're on the phones with sellers. Okay. Now, what I want y'all to understand about this calculator is... We do not run numbers at 70% of the ARV minus repairs minus a wholesale fee. That gives you a man. There's a reason we do not do that because so often you will get an MAO spit out that your buyers cannot buy it. And then I hear so many people all over this country, Lord Jesus, help them. They're like, in this market, people will buy 80. Okay. I already went over it. It's not a good way to run your numbers. Does it work? Sometimes it does. It does. I also cannot have my team or my students use this calculator that I built out on this spreadsheet that has every cost possible known to man in the worst case scenario with the worst hard money lender points and interest rates on the planet be the way that you run numbers for every property because I'm going to let y'all know right now. Whether you run that number at, 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 on the phone with the seller, you're trying to figure out the range in which end buyers will buy with this calculator, okay? You're trying to do it in quick time on the phone with the seller. Do you have time to determine if most hard money lenders in that market are going to be at 10 and 1 or 12 and 2? Or if the buyers are usually using hard money lenders in this price point in this market. You don't got time to do that while you're on the phone with the seller, do you? Now, if you want to take eight years to underwrite a deal the way the hard money lender or the bank or the mortgage company or the so-and-so and so-and-so -so is going to do it, I would say you might as well go ahead and get three contractor bids before signing that contract with that seller too. And I get it. I get it. I get it. I'm going to let y'all know I was the crazy woman when we first started wholesaling, I literally 
we came from the GC world. We just, we just shut down our, our GC company and every single one of our deals that we wholesaled instead of flipped, y'all know what I would do. I would write a line item scope that I knew that we could fulfill as a GC. And I would send that to my buyers. That didn't mean that we did the flips for them, but that's how detailed of a process I used to use when I used the spreadsheet of spreadsheets with 40 boxes for you to fill out. Now we're going into property taxes, right? Property taxes are different all over this country. They are different. They're just different. <laughs> I'm just letting you know. If you got to look up the cost of every one of those numbers, utility costs are different all over the country. Did y'all know that? If you've got to look up it, you can't do that. You cannot do that. You cannot run those numbers like that and try to underwrite every stinking deal like this. So this profit calculator was born from Eventually, we went nationwide as wholesalers and fix and flippers and buy and holders. So we've put ourselves through the seats of our buyers, okay? And I want y'all to understand that these calculations on this, they are adjustable. If you do find the majority of your buyers, I'm going to let y'all know something. It's... Your, your one buyer, every one of their expenses is not going to be the same as another buyer's. Okay. And I'm just going to give y'all examples. We're very experienced investors. I don't get the same number back from three contractors. If I send three contractors out with the same scope of work, I don't get the same number back. Okay. I also don't pay for a lot of costs that some other buyers, especially newer buyers are going to pay. I don't pay 3% to list our flip. I don't pay for an appraisal with my hard money lender. I don't pay, you know what I'm saying? Like there's things like we don't pay for a formal inspection, whereas some buyers might pay for that stuff. Okay. There are times where our best buyer has a little bit more of expenses. So I'm going to tell you all how we put the numbers in this calculator and the aim here. Okay. So this is in the Facebook group and I believe it will forever be on the YouTube channel, RJ's, RJ's YouTube channel. Cause why would we create another one? That 30% is not the number in almost every market these days. That's absolutely right. And we did not have to make an adjustment in how we ran numbers or our calculator when the market shifted. We didn't, we didn't, we just had to find the ARV. We are, we maybe got a little conservative on the ARVs. We did have to pay attention that rehab's a little bit more, you know, we had to make some of those adjustments certainly, but we didn't have to figure out how to rerun numbers or retrain our entire team or reteach ourselves, right? Um, Thank you, Facebook user. <laughs> okay, so what, what I want y'all to understand, okay, is that a lot of people make this mistake too, and I'm going to go through this, but they think that you run the numbers and you get 50% of the ARV, okay? 50% of this ARV, if they offered that, they would be at $100,000 if they put this ARV in. Just so y'all know, also... <laughs> the aqua colored boxes, that's the numbers we change. If you hadn't figured that part out and this is where the money is. <laughs> so 50% of the ARV on this, this is why that would not work. I don't want to do as a buyer, a $40,000 rehab for $26,000 potential, potential being the keyword profit. I don't want to do that. Right. Um, 70%. I'm not going to do 70% of the ARV minus repairs thing because uh, I don't have that pulled up. Um, so, but it's, it's the same reasons that 
that doesn't work or the same reasons just offering offering 50% doesn't work, right? Um, it's for the same reasons. So where we, where our web is built, I should just call this the web calculator. Y'all want me to change it now? We're just going to do that. Um, where you end up with a $200,000 ARV, a $40,000 repair budget, and $100,000 to your seller is... You don't get a wholesale fee if that property moves because your buyer is going to want to come in at that hundred thousand dollar mark. Right? So you have to determine and where I also see a lot of people making mistakes. Oh Lord Jesus. I hope some of y'all are on here and I hope you're paying attention. Good Lord Jesus. If you have a property locked up for $10,000 and I see a $30,000 or $15,000 wholesale fee on it, and you think it is going to move, Lord, you've got a unicorn. I, that is not common, y'all. Come on now. That is not, you done got a Fizbo off of Zillow and you're putting $15,000 on your $10,000 contract because you think it's going to work with that 70% of the ARV. Month. No, you just stop yourself right there. Whew, had to get that one out. I don't like it when you don't. It's like the realtor that's trying to make them justify their, their use. I hate it when I see people put astronomical numbers that are deal killers as their wholesale fee. Don't be a deal killer. Solve the seller's problem. Run the numbers right. Be a good resource for your end buyer. Come on now. Don't be putting astronomical wholesale fees in there, y'all. You want to do good, consistent business. You don't want to try to hit a stinking grand slam on a $10,000 contract because if you got that big a wholesale fee on there, you probably didn't run the numbers right, just so you know. Anyways, so you've got to determine, okay, what did that seller's asking price be? Um, but you also have to understand, guys, we use this on dispositions, right? I think, you know, in general, um, if you were to have like a traditional listing on the, on the MLS, uh, if this seller were to go list this property and it sold for $200,000 or your buyer doesn't have like a fat flat fee listing or a regular agent they use that gives them the hookup for repeat business, or they don't, they're not agents themselves or they don't have an agent on their team and they're paying that. You have to understand that that agent is going to get six thousand dollars out of this right so you know you also have to understand that yes your buyer on their closing costs are going to pay for title insurance at the at the purchase and at the sale more often than not um you know some states they have buyer they they the buyers and the seller split the title fees some states you know, it's here in Texas, it's usually just on the buyer for the buy or the seller for the title insurance. So a lot of times in our markets, what you'll see is that the when you as the buyer pay for the, the, the title insurance and that fee gets put onto your buyer, they're going to pay for it twice. A lot of states are like that. It kind of varies. Um, typically we just run it for this because it, the calculation, the way it's based off of is on the ARV in the beginning. We're again, assuming that, you know, we're looking for the experienced buyers that kind of have, you know, some savings on some of those fees. They have really regular contractors. We're not trying to narrow our buyers pool to the needle in the haystack, but we're not trying to have the worst case scenario where we're going to put in every possible cost known to man including mowing the lawn because your lawn mower costs way too much. Um, we're not putting those on that spreadsheet that Cassie built out, you know, in 2017 or something like that. We're not putting all of those costs in. We're trying to get in that range. And I'm just going to let y'all know if you're one of those people that's about to be like, well, what about when they have to pay for their $450 appraisal? I'm not, I'm not here for it account for it <laughs> on your list price put put the put the arv at 20 2000 or 201000 okay i don't i we are not getting into the nitty gritty on this calculator right there's another calculator for that in fact 
I compare my numbers running this calculator to people who do, who do have those calculators. And more often than not, my buyers are better off buying from my numbers, right? Our numbers, right? And so I want you to understand that the formulas that are built into this calculator are not going to be something that you're going to just, you know, go find every one of those nitty gritty expenses accounted for, right? But also understand when your buyer says, hey, my costs to purchase this deal for that specific buyer, your best buyer, the buyer you like the most, the buyer you want to assign this to most, they're like, these are my actual costs. Instead of $14,000 for my closing costs, it's $16,000 for my closing costs. And it's like, uh, you know, if for me as a buyer, half of the dang old time, when I realized that during my, you know, running the numbers as the buyer with my cost accounted for, I am sitting there going like, huh, well, can I get this material on a discount and make up for that? I bet you I can, you know? I'm not trying to get into the nitty gritty when I'm on the phone for the seller. I'm trying to fill out four boxes. So we do keep those closing costs at 7% because for the most part, that's where, that's the web. You're trying to get into that range. Okay. You're not trying to get the nitty gritty detail for the worst case for every buyer that's ever paid a, a fee known to man ever. Okay for that specific lender, for that specific contractor, for that specific agent that they use for that, you know, you're not trying to do all that. So that's why it's calculated like this. So for those of you who know that the holding costs, those can vary by how long the rehab is. I recommend you keep it at 5% on this calculator. Okay. But sometimes those, those, those holding costs for some flips, can get up there, especially when you're like, you know, well, your buyer and, and their hard money loan is kind of expensive and their hard money lender is charging a huge fee. I saw this not that long ago with one of our buyers and I can't remember who it was, but their underwriter fees for the hard money lender that they used were so high, so, so, so high. I think they had a really good interest rate and a good uh, point rate that might, I can't remember what it was exactly. It was a couple months ago, but their underwriter fees. Ooh, Lord, y'all be careful when y'all finding hard money lenders out there. Okay. Because you know, some of the best hard money lenders we use, they used to go and they used to be like, Hey, you know, we're not, we don't have all these hidden junk fees and all this, that, and the other. And I'm not trying to talk bad about hard money lenders. We use some great ones and, and I'm proud to, proud to use them. Um, not that we're doing a mass volume flip. We've done, we've had a lot of flips in our history, hundreds of flips. Um, but, but again, we're nationwide. There's all kinds of kinds. There's all kinds of costs, right? Um, sometimes, you know, when we're running our general numbers, if I just have the instinct where it's like, oof, these holding costs on this are going to get up there. I might bump that holding cost up to a 6% sometimes even 7%. But what I want y'all to know is if you go and you don't have this profit calculator or you're not calculating the formula on the background of it and you just go in there, I want y'all to know that sometimes people's expenses for their true overall broken down holding and closing costs can range from 15%, 13%, sometimes on some deals, and then all the way up to like 22 or 23 percent if that's how you're going to calculate it right so i want you guys to understand that putting this in the web getting this general where the end buyers buy and i want you to know if you're if, if at the end of the day when you're using this on dispositions okay and you're talking to your buyer about their their closing costs their holding costs and you're saying to them okay well, you know, your your closing cost should be around, you know, $14,000 roughly. Oh, no, you got $12,000 because you have this or that. Great. Great. And then your holding costs, what do you think they're going to be? Well, what if they paid in cash for that property? Their holding costs are going to be significantly lower, right? Um, if their hard money loan and 
their fees on that are, are kind of high, well, then they're going to be a little bit more expensive, right? But a lot of times when those are more expensive, right, they're okay with paying the difference. They are going to say, hey, I'm going to do a $40,000 rehab and my profit potential is $41,000. Well, they're paying fees to that lender that are more expensive than, you know, this other buyer over here, but they're willing to make 15% profit right? So on this calculator, for those of you that have it, we like to keep it. Is the juice worth the squeeze? This is why we've simplified this. This is why it's the web, okay? This is why we've simplified it into four boxes instead of 40. We're not accounting for every little tiny baby expense, including how much the water bill is going to be for three months. We are accounting for, is the juice going to be worth a squeeze? And will our buyers pool, an entire pool of buyers, will we be in the range for them? Will they be able to profit? They absolutely will. That is the profit calculator. So I need y'all to understand the magic, the path of the math of this. I don't want y'all getting in the weeds. That's why we simplified the closers formula. That's why we did this. You don't have to do mind control. You also don't have to completely know how to be a mortgage loan officer or an underwriter or whatever. You got to be able to simplify this and do the math. It is not magic. Okay. This is why I came up with the profit calculator, guys. It's so that on the phone with that seller. Now, it's no different. The profit calculator is a really, really, really good example of why we don't ask sellers on that phone call. When the last time their water heater was replaced, I'm not trying to get to the penny with this thing. And that's how the profit calculator was born. Our buyers are going to go know their expenses. Their contractors are going to know their charges. They're going to know how much a water heater costs in Timbuktu compared to Fort Worth, Texas. I don't need to know that to do my job. And I, this is why we're catching them in, a, in an entire web. The buyer's pool is the web and you want to fit in there and you want to have it be attractive to your buyers and for them to have a good potential profit. You're not going to underwrite a deal in five minutes and understand exactly what a buyer's profit is going to be for every buyer. It's no two are the same, right? So what I want you guys to understand about this is that ask me this question in the end of the comments because I already know y'all are going to ask it and I'm going to get right into comping. Man, I'm making good time here, y'all. I'm covering good materials. I'm proud of myself. I, I'm an hour and 22 minutes in. It's 1222. 222 is my birthday. 22 is also titanium on the periodic table of elements. For those of you who don't know, that's a really lucky number for me, and I'm making good time. So um, I'm covering I'm covering ground here, but I know y'all are going to have questions for me at the end, so I'm going to get right into the comping here in just a second. I'm going to give you a couple of quick comp examples that are going to apply those rules. And I'm going to show you on this calculator how we underwrote those two. And I'm going to need all the thumbs and all, all the thumbs up and the likes and the shares and the thank yous and the and the good things for that. Um, I appreciate y'all. I've, I've got a lot of people that are still staying tuned, which is very exciting for me. Um, I've, I'm, I'm right around 100 people watching this this entire time that I've noticed. And so... Man, that, that I will say that that just fuels our mission here um, with what RJ and I and our team are trying to get out there um, to y'all um, about our process and how we do things so we can change lives and businesses. And, and so this is really exciting for me. I'm going to get emotional, so I'm going to get right back into comping. Um, but I do appreciate the support, you guys. And um, I appreciate the watch time and the engagement. It, it, it really means a lot to me. I'm nerding out and I love it. Yes, I am nerding out too because this is this is all my nerd brain. And look, guys, like this is this. I guess I say it's the it's the math, not magic, all the time. The path of the math has to be clear. I talk about these phrases all the time in my business and my team. God love them. They hear me say saying dang old things all the time, and I'm like, you got to build a bridge. You got to paint a picture. They they need to understand it, right? You got to see the path of the math. <laughs> and, um, 
I really do nerd out over this because I'm going to tell y'all, and, and I really appreciate RJ all the time, and, and this is not due to him. This is due to the public. Um, you know, a lot of people are really, he's, he is so wonderful and they, they love what he, he shows and what he teaches. And, you know, he sits there and tells people all the time, you know, the closer formula is nothing. If you don't, if you don't comp and underwrite and use the process that works in that, if without that, I can't do the closers formula, not in a timely manner. He is a freaking machine. For any of y'all have watched the 50, 50, 50, Lord Jesus, did you see the KPIs on that thing? I sat there and told my team, we don't need nobody doing acquisitions other than RJ. We don't. Because when RJ and I hit them phones, I'm going to let you know nobody else needs to do acquisitions in our company. He's a machine. The KPIs are there. The proof is in the pudding. And we move the deals on the end. That's why this is important. Without the closer formula, a lot of people want to say to RJ, like, yeah, but how many of those get dispoed and why aren't you talking about dispo? Good Lord, we're getting there. This is free content, y'all. <laughs> and I want y'all to understand, he talks about it all the time, but like a lot of people just don't understand. We have a, we have a great community, a great following, and um, we have a, a really, really comprehensive um, platform education program that we are working on um just giving you all the details and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of this um we have boot camps that that work on implementing these processes and winning and making money when you're when you're going through this and which is what people get into this for um you know we we work really 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 hard to to show this and and god love my partner because he's like hey without this stuff you know i wouldn't be able to do that right and so for us to put it in a format that y'all can do it quickly we can teach it quickly honestly the first time i built this profit calculator wasn't for y'all believe it or not it was for the sweet little butts sitting in our seats calling them sellers every day i didn't want to have them have to keep asking the same questions Y'all know what? Give me two seconds. I'm going to mute myself. I knew this was going to end up happening. Can someone from my team come here real fast? All right. Sorry about that, y'all. I need to take a quick break. Um, it wasn't like the end of the world or anything like that. I just, I have a um, cleaner scheduled at a house that has listing photos happening tomorrow morning. And she was calling me and I was like, oh Lord, is there a problem getting in? And nobody got here fast enough. So I, it wasn't the end of the world, um, but I was worried she wasn't going to be able to get into the property for some reason, even though like she was just there yesterday. Long story short, sorry about that. Y'all needed a quick break anyways. I needed a drink and some chapstick. And we're going to get into the comping. And then I will do, just so y'all know, in case you didn't catch this, you have been here the whole time. I will do um, a very small, 
a very small amount of Q&A at the end, okay? Now, what happens if I do this is I'm going to get a lot of questions. And if you haven't been here the whole time and you ask me a question, you can't get offended. Can't get offended if I answered it earlier in the video and I'm just assuming you need to rewatch it. It's okay. Don't get offended. I'm not ignoring you. I love y'all. I had people already submitting properties they wanted me to comp. Not going to have time to do that today. It's not what this video is for. It's for me to be your comper and your underwriter. It's for me to teach you how to do it um, because you need to know how to do it. I can't be there for you all the time. Okay. That's why I tell my students all the time. Like y'all know if I was sat there and I comped your, your properties all day, every day, you're not going to run a very consistent amount of business because I'm one person. <laughs> I want y'all to learn how to do it yourselves. <laughs> Uh, that's the goal is that you're able to do it when you're on the phone with that seller, right? Um, that is what I am trying. That's the mission. So I hope the mission resonates with y'all. Um, because that's how you're going to get the business you want. That's how you're going to do the deals you want, you know? Um, okay. So let me get this little the, this, these little tools I have pulled up over here. And just so y'all know, it is called the profit calculator for those of you. Sometimes we have our students ask. So funny. Um, let's see. What do we want to comp today? Let's do this one. I'm just going to give y'all some uh some visuals if you will applying the rules your guidelines or guardrails from this videos hey i didn't send a prop and a comp michael <laughs> i love you michael lewis <laughs> you guys know i sure need the help look we all need the help Oh, thanks, Mark. Jeremy. Now that's my brother right there. My brother. Nerding out with me. He, Jeremy and I are real big, real big nerds about this stuff. Hey, neighbor. <laughs> I love that. Okay. So, um, just so y'all know, um, if you do... Uh, you do have, you know, comps that are, that are quite, or questions at the end. I'm going to, I'm going to open that up. Um, but I'm going to be selective, you know, about which ones I answer because a lot of times what will happen is like people, you know, are at different levels of trying to understand this and, um, or they might've, you know, missed something that I talked about in the first 30 minutes because they had an appointment run over, whatever. Um, I'm going to open it up to Q&A because I want, I want good questions to be asked and, and that helps the mission, right? Um, but I will have you know that, you know, you're not going to learn everything that you need to know about comping or underwriting, even for the closures formula in two hours. Okay. You're going to need to to implement this. Okay. Um, I will also tell you that there's nobody, there's been one team I've ever seen that came close and still, that's still the way they, they, they comped and underwrote as a team. We're just not one quite there. And for them to go nationwide, they need to make adjustments to those things, right? What they, the way they did it was in their market. And it, and it probably worked very well for them in their market, but their volume was going down in that market. So they had adjustments that they need to make, right? Mm -hmm. Love you, mean it. 
I need to implement this using matrix. It can get confusing a little bit. Yeah, this can get confusing a little bit. I'll let y'all know I didn't, I didn't comp this way forever. I didn't underwrite this way for forever and ever. Amen. I've already explained that to y'all. Um, but I, I have found that this is the best simplified version. I promise if I make changes to it, I'll go live and tell y'all about it. How about that? But that means you got to stay tuned. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to comp this property for y'all applying those. I'm going to, I'm going to give you a couple of examples. And one of them's in Texas for those of you who don't like non-disclosure states. <laughs> I am sticking to also sticking to prop stream, prop stream on this. And yes, there are other tools, but I can't be live for 24 hours a day showing y'all this. It's only one session. I don't plan to go anywhere. So don't get mad if it's not like, it's like they're saying, I comp, I'm going to comp a Texas property in my market, not on the MLS, right, right in front of your very eyes today. So it is confusing for people and it does take getting used to, and it does take practice, right? Like if you go from one system in anything, any part of this business, you go from one CRM to another, it takes a minute. You slow down for a second. It's harder to use. And if y'all are like, RJ, you don't like that. And you're like, no, I don't want to do a new system. I just want to use this one. Well, some of these things in this business, you got to use it. You got to adjust. You got to adapt. You got to pivot or you die. Comps and underwriting is one of those things. So you can do it. Our team can do it. I don't use prop wire, Jeffrey. I've never used it. Although... Our community has been asking us to split test it. I know that a couple of people have sent it in and said, use prop wire. I know Jerry at one point told RJ, y'all got to test it out. I think we need to text Jerry. Maybe that will be my next live. Maybe I'll, I'll just blindfold it. I'll go in blindfolded y'all and I'll test comps on prop wire. That would be fun. That would be a fun live to do. Okay, so what's the first thing I do? I get my property, I go to Google. Now, what y'all don't know and what I didn't say earlier is nine times out of 10, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna put this on Zillow as well. Oh, son of a gun. Shoot, I don't wanna, I don't wanna give it away. We're not going to go on Zillow on this one. <laughs> Y'all pretend that didn't happen. I didn't know. I didn't know. What's so funny. Oh my gosh. I got to pull that up off screen. Y'all, I'm going to die. That's so funny. Oh, P.S. Before I read the comments, I don't know if I've had a single complaint on this. But one time there was somebody that commented on RJ's YouTube and they were like, Maybe it's because I talk slow sometimes and sometimes I talk really fast and then blah, blah, blah. They're like, she seems like she's high. And I'm like, you seem like you're an asshole. You know, sorry if you have kids <laughs> and, and you don't curse in front of them. But like, if you have something negative to say or you don't like this, go on somebody else's free content and giveaway and coaching and, and comment on theirs. Or go do it live yourself and maybe I'll come on and pay you the same respect. Probably not. I ain't got time for that. Look, ask good questions, but don't, don't be a troll. Hopefully I don't have any trolls in here today. Just appreciative, grateful souls for what I'm giving away. And hopefully if I did have a troll, my whole team just went and told them to shut the front door. Okay, um, ba -ba 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 -ba. interesting. Oh, maybe I wasn't giving something away. Maybe I clicked on the wrong one. Okay, so we're going to get to comping. What is the first thing I'm going to do, right? 
Oof. I am crazy. Okay. I do often pull Zillow up. Somehow I must have pulled up the wrong property on Zillow because I thought it was listed and I thought it was giving away the ARV and I didn't want to ruin it for y'all. But I must have clicked on a different property. But it still would have ruined it for y'all. But I can't click on, on Zillow for this one. So what, what I'm usually going to do is I'm going to, first thing I'm going to do is put it just into straight Google. No, I don't use the, the map. No, I don't use the satellite view on these comp tools because they're kind of clunky. If you've ever tried to do it, even on Zillow, it's very clunky and it's so much better and so much faster for me to just go, okay, I've got the address. I'm going to paste it in here. I'm going to click it and then I'm going to go to details and then I'm going to put it in Google and I'm going to go like this and search Google map for it and then click on my Zillow and you know, it's just faster. And I'm all about expediency with this stuff. Um, I'm going to go to this satellite view. I'm going to look for those railroad tracks. If they're water lots, if they're golf course lots, it just doesn't apply to just the negatives. Y'all it applies to the positives too. If you got a water access lot, it's better than a not water access lot. If you got a golf course lot, they go for more than not golf course lots, you know? So keep in mind, that's one of the other reasons that I always go to the street view, right? It's super, oh, son of a biscuit. Can you share your screen? <laughs> this is what I'm not getting into the dang old comments. Is that better? It would help. If I actually, <laughs> yeah, the actual comp process takes a few minutes, not a four minute live, but thank you, Patrick. And thank you for uh, pointing that out. <laughs> it does take years of experience to be able to, to comp a property in five minutes. And I'm trying to speed that up for you guys by teaching you all the little things that I learned that are now a one second process in my brain. And this is people, you know, this is why historically I haven't gone public teaching this stuff is because I have people who can't, who can't see that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I'm going to go for a two hour live teaching you guys about comps and underwriting and how we do it. Um, but yeah, actually clicking the buttons you know, versus me talking to you about why and what I cover and what I'm looking at. It takes a lot less time. So um, anyways, I am looking for this. Sorry, I didn't have the screen shared. I am looking for those things. And this is a really good point on this one is in our neighborhood, there, there are water lots, right? And so ours is not a water lot. So we need to be mindful about that when we're looking at the comps. Again, is there a railroad track? Am I on a major road? Does it look like I'm on a major road? And then I really just go and click right there and I go into the street view and I look at our subject property and this is a pretty old normal neighborhood. And I just go through 360. Am I on a corner? Is there commercial buildings next door? Is there a convenience store next door? Is there a cemetery across the street? Is there um multifamily next door and i didn't realize that is there um you know these are the things you're looking is there a liquor store across across the way is there a church is there a daycare is there you know those are the kinds of things y'all are looking for when you're doing that um 360 very grateful thank you yes no i i am i definitely uh uh I'm grateful that I have the ability and the knowledge to do this, right? So then I may look at uh, I may look at this uh, street view here, but sometimes it's clunky in other markets. But I may just be verifying the bedroom and bathroom and square foot bedrooms, bath square footages there. One of the reasons I also sometimes like to have Zillow pulled up or I will go to like Redfin or Trulia is because if it, if this is something where it was listed in recent years and sold, sometimes it'll have pictures. And then sometimes it will have a rent, rentals estimate. But I just also keep it pulled up in case I want to quick verify an overarching amount of comps against my comp tool that I'm using. And then sometimes I like to look at and I'm not getting into this on this call because I'm not staying on here for four hours today, y'all. I got 
I got maybe, you know, 30, 40 minutes left. Okay. Um, what, what I like to have on Zillow more than anything is the active rent comps. I like to see what landlords, because a lot of landlords will self list on, on Zillow versus listing on the MLS listing with a property manager. Okay. I like to see what people are listing their, their rentals for. And I'm like what the rental market is looking like and how it's moving on Zillow. I don't like to go and get nitty gritty and go on rent a meter or whatever. Um, all the comp tools that I use, they do normally have, a monthly rent estimate and now three of them are usually the same and I half the time will average them out really quick in my brain. Um, which I won't even bother putting it into, you know, um, a calculator. I just want to look for a couple quick rental listings in my neighborhood that look like mine. And so I pretty much always go straight into that Zillow for those reasons. Um, but like I said earlier, it, it's a little, Zillow is a little bit better on, on some, in some markets than it used to be for sure. And so I do, uh, I do verify against, uh, I won't say that I won't. And there's also some people asking, well, PropWire and Zillow, why don't you show comps on that? Well, because I don't really comp on that. Um, not necessarily what I recommend as a nationwide wholesaler. Um, that's the main reasons. Um, I haven't used prop wire. I'm not, I'm not going to just comp on Zillow because I know that it's not consistently right in every market. Right. So I'm not going to tell you to go be a nationwide wholesaler and understand how to comp and underwrite across this nation as my community and tell you to use something that I don't use or wouldn't use in that market. I'm not saying it will never work. I'm just saying I like to have more percentage of likelihood of it working out and being accurate than versus hoping and wishing I, it, it hope is not a strategy for me with this. I'm trying to win every time I'm trying to solve problems. Right? So that's why I do it like this. I'm not saying it'll never work. So don't try to be the, be the guy or gal that's trying to make me eat my words. It's just kind of like RJ trying to go show you how he would do Fizbo's. Do we do that? No. Is it possible? Yes. Would we recommend you stay there? No. So one of the reasons I, cho I chose um, this For me with creative deals, I like to run Airbnb comps at the same time as rent. Yeah, a lot of times I just because we do a certain amount of volume, um, we don't really run Airbnb comps until we're buying an Airbnb. We don't wholesale for Airbnb. I think part of the thing is for us and, and what we're trying to get uh, across is like our buy and hold buyers. It's so funny because people ask like why we don't show more examples or hone in on that or so on and so forth. And it's like, because realistically when I buy and hold or if I had an Airbnb, we don't do just a ton of it right at the moment. Um, I run Airbnb, uh, I still want to buy it. Like it's a buy and hold. Um, and the reason I want that for my buyers is because, you know, I've seen Airbnb screw up one of our Airbnbs and thank God we bought it like a normal buy and hold. So where our mortgage could be covered by the rent rate because they shut us down. Um, and especially for people who, who have like Airbnb portfolios. I get really nervy if they're running numbers off of the Airbnb rates, like what happens if they get shut down. Um, that's, you know, it makes me really nervy. So that's kind of like a niche thing that, that wouldn't be something that I run numbers on. 
um, while I'm pulling uh, comps, I'm talking to a seller. Um, that's another one of those things. Like if you heard me on the profit calculator portion of this, like I'm going to let my buyer run their numbers like that. You know, that's up to them to know their numbers and what they need to do. Um, I don't, we don't typically do that while we're comping, right? Um, for that niche or less likely scenario, this is really just that web, that process that we're trying to apply to the entire web where end buyers buy, right? Um, because if they buy at these numbers, then it, and they want to turn it into an Airbnb, then it should work, if that makes sense. So if some of y'all come from the school of thought of some more niche categories or creatives, um, this is how RJ and I typically will buy our, our creative deals too, or hold or like what we like to turn around and sell our finance or things like that. Um, the numbers end up shaking out very similar to us for us. Um, and like, I, I can talk a lot more about that later down the road when we start kind of going into dispo for free. <laughs> we definitely talk about that exit strategy first for those of you who have uh, taken our taken our education and our courses. So what I want to show y'all here is we have verified 1,278 square feet. Here's our lot size. You know, you're built 1998, 3-2, and you can go in property details. I'm not going to go through teaching y'all how to navigate prop stream. Right here, we saw on the street view, you know, everything's pretty much shaken out to be looking like it's right from the street view. I'm verifying, right? Er. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. That value. Mm, thank you. Um, Sorry, I got distracted reading the comments again. Let's get into the comps. I'm going to go right here, right into the comps, okay? I want you all to understand these filters. When I run numbers on the MLS, um, I like to go with this filter. And the reason that I usually comp on prop, prop stream and batch right now, because they've gone back and forth nationwide not just in one market, this whole nation. Okay. Um, I have things that I like about both of them, but the reason I go here first is because I'm faster here because I get to have my filter as uh, over under by the square foot. So it's like 200 over 200 under. Sometimes I'll do 300 over 300 under on other, like on the MLS, you know, but I like to really try to stay in that range of 500 or 400, excuse me, to 600 square feet plus or minus because that's what an appraiser is going to do. Okay. Um, I want you guys to understand that a lot of times the problem that I see with people where they screw up is not going to be shown on this particular comp, but they're going to try to pick the one outlier comp that's the highest price comp that sold and say that's the arv not in today's market guys you're not you need to have minimally three minimally three in that range you have to understand you're not going to go make those adjustments by the dollar amount in five minutes when you're on the phone with the seller so one of the other things I really like about PropStream is that um, all of that's like kind of right here, okay? Now, it auto-selects the comps that are within these filters. It automatically goes within half a mile. And according to those comp guardrails, I need to make sure what I've got going on here. And I've got to realize, oh, oh, oh. Oh, there's water lots. Are any of these water lots? Are any of them water lots? It's important for you to know. Oh, they're not. That's wonderful. How are all of our comps not water lots on this? Well, because I chose this one because I already knew the comps. 
<laughs> I didn't want to dig into y'all, but I wanted to make sure I could teach it to you. Um, I didn't want to get too lost and click and click and click and click in to, to discover, right? While I was talking and teaching. So you have to also understand probably the first thing I'm going to do from here is I've already made sure none of my comps are really crossing over major roads. They're not in a different neighborhood. I'm not sitting here going and looking to for the dividing lines of the subdivision and making sure that, you know, like we don't know. No, we don't do that. I'm just doing this based on like, I am 99% sure because I've done this a bajillion times that we're good. We're good right here. We're good with these comps right here. Okay. I could probably go out even a little bit further if I needed to and find these same comps in the same neighborhood. In fact, I know I can on this one, right? But this is why I like it to be sorted by distance, okay? It does go the past year. So if I really wanted to tweak this out by distance because I still have more neighborhood to cover and go the past six months or nine months, depending on how much turnover there is in that neighborhood, you can do that. I don't like to waste my time tweaking it that much when I've got literally this just spit out comps for me. So one of the reasons I like to have batch on this, right, is I like to, uh, I like to click, I like the way that it navigates because I can click, it has a lot more photos. Mortgage and transaction history tends to pop up a lot more on PropStream, at least since the last time that I've tested it on Batch. But I also know that Batch is always working to put more of that stuff um, within their system. And I know that they've been telling me um, when I've touched base over there at the Batch headquarters that, you know, they are actively working to be, you know, the current best with the MLS data um, so on and so forth. And so I want you guys to know I'm always split testing these, these, um, softwares that we use. Um, I've been using PropStream and batch for years and years and years. Um, in some markets I've really, really loved privy, um, privy data, um, and having just like that MLS, you know, is, is faster. I know that batches we're going to catch up and, I'm, I'm sure like there's, you know, this is like a horse race where the leader kind of always <laughs> changes and there's different things that I like about different ones. Uh, I am showing you this because I do love the navigation of this, right? And it is because it's in that distance range. Now, if I had one of these comps right here, say it was worth, I could see, I see people run into this all the time too. And it's, you know, I've got 15 properties pulled up. And on the very outside of this, I see a property pop up that's 575000 and one that's 615000 Where I see a lot of those people go wrong is that they end up saying they're going to include those two comps, right? And when I say one of these things is not like the other, if you have consistent data that is closer to your property and those first six comps, what do you think an appraiser is going to choose, right? If you have consistent data that those are updated, those are remodeled houses, they're closer, they're in your subdivision, you probably are seeing those groups of properties, you know, they're like a neighborhood over or phase new or they're in a different subdivision or they have different other factors that are making them worth more, even if they look the same. It does not mean somebody's going to buy in your neighborhood or in your backyard. If you see the consistent data where people are listing and selling their properties that you're going to turn this into with a rehab budget, right? Then those are your comps. You don't get to cherry pick. An appraiser is not going to cherry pick and tell the lender that the property's worth that amount 
So don't be the person that makes those mistakes. Not fond of appraisers. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I've only had to go to toe to toe with maybe a handful of them. And I want y'all to know I have my favorite appraiser was on this uh, feed earlier, but I've gone toe to toe with maybe a handful and I have a perfect track record against an appraiser on getting them to change their appraisal. For the most part, our, our appraisals come back exactly where we expect them to. Yeah, I, I can understand, man. When you get that one that's just kicking the pants, <laughs> I totally understand. Anyways, I am kind of fond of appraisers, or at least one. Uh, I've met a lot of good appraisers. Um, I haven't, we haven't had too many problems with them over the years, to be honest. But man, that one that does, it's a, it's, a, woof, it's rough. Now, I see other people who might try to put this property at like a four hundred thousand dollar ARV because they just want to be safe. They want to screw up. All right. So what I want to tell y'all or 300, whatever thousand, right? What I want to tell y'all is that an appraisal averages things out. And if you want to comp quick, right? I don't often go look at every single one of these properties, but you will catch me doing this action very quickly if I'm comp comping on prop stream and don't have batch pulled up, okay? I will highlight, highlight that property address, right? See what I'm doing there? Right click, search, Google search, go back. I highlight, right click, search, Google search, go back. I'm pulling up photos. Dag nabbit. I don't have the photos. So I could right click and do that one too. Talking to the seller the whole time, right click and doing that one too. Oh God, this one has a pool. Oh, it's a community pool. It's just a community pool pictures in the beach. Cool. So what I want to tell y'all that you don't need to have me do on it, this is that all of these properties on this are very similar to the subject property. This wasn't a very easy comp, right? But you see that there's a range of numbers, right? There is $480,000 on one of these, right? But there's also three ninety seven dollars on one of these. That's a $100,000 difference. And so when I went and did all the research, actually, I think RJ comped this one on the live. It was a 50-50-50 deal. Um, we did not put... $480,000 is the ARV. We have comp games. We have recomp relay race. We have comping, you know, sessions. We have comping trainings coming out our ear holes. I comp with my team every day. And I will let y'all know where a lot of people screw up as they try to say that this ARV should be $480,000. I will let y'all know. Some of you might put $440,000 on this and that's okay. RJ and I, in one of our virtual things the other day, we were $8,000 difference on the ARV. It might've changed the conversation a little bit on that one for me because it was a really low price point than when he had it. But he's like, ah, oh, we're going to, we're going to do some due diligence. She was really adamant that this property didn't need work. And I think I put a little bit cush in the rehab. That's okay. You're not going to have the perfect number on every one of these. But I will tell you that our community, our people, our titans, okay, our team, they still come up with buyer's web numbers, okay? The web numbers, okay? So what we put as the ARV on this we're talking to the seller. It's four hundred and thirty thousand dollars. Some of y'all might put four forty, and I'm gonna let you know what that looks like. Okay, four hundred thirty thousand dollars, and the seller said 
this, 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 and this is, I mean, everything's great. This is all updated. Da, 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 da. I have this problem and that problem, this problem and that problem to us. This is a 1200 square foot property. Okay. I think it was paint and countertops and one little roof repair because it has a tile roof. Okay. What RJ ran the numbers at was that. And I'm just going to let you guys know that this is the point where a lot of people screw up on the profit calculator. They're like, okay, um, you know, the seller, you're, I mean, with the, with the closers formula, we're asking the seller, we're, we're having a seller price in here that we're going to put in. I don't hundred percent remember what that price was, but I think it was a price and we gave it to her. But for all intents and purposes, we made a rip on this one. So I'm going to try to show y'all where you can be. Now, if you're doing a $30,000 repair to this property as a buyer and you know what, if whatever that seller is asking, you can go up to dang near uh, $260,000. Oh, sorry. I did not math that right in my brain. 300 and 10. You can go a little, a little bit higher, add in a wholesale fee, whatever that looks like, what the math is. Um, kind of play around with the numbers a little bit and so on and so forth. Right. I will let y'all know. I don't even remember what we sold this property at, but I will let y'all know that uh, we sold this property. We sold it very easily. And I will let y'all know, I get this question a lot and it's probably going to come up in the question Q and a part. Um, well, that's a really low profit percentage. I will let y'all know this rehab was very conservative. It didn't even need $30,000 worth of work. And, um, I will, I will also let you guys know that 6.6% profit, I would buy that deal every dang day compared to like 15% profit deals that I see come across all the time. And people ask me, well, Cassie, why does that, why does that not matter in your calculator? Blah, 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 blah. Well, because this is basically a dang old wholetail deal, to be honest with you, after we discovered what the, what the rehab number is, you're not going to get those as often as you will, like super distressed properties that take a lot more rehab. But I see people make both mistakes where they don't give themselves the cushion in that ARV for your buyer. Now, like if somebody was going to go try to put marble countertops in this instead of just standard granite and they want to freaking put too much work and over improve this property for the market, well, that's on them, right? But you're just trying to run the numbers for what those comps look like, okay? Now, some people might go, well, we really want to be right around 300 on this one, you know, da, 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 da. Um, honestly, like there's a lot of buyers that are just not going to have nearly as many. Now where this property ended up after doing due diligence was a lot, 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 lot less on all of these things. The closing costs were near, not nearly as much. The holding costs were not nearly as much. The repairs were not nearly as much. And so there was a lot more profit potential on this one. Right? So as far as you talking to the seller, and this is the point I want to make to you guys in the closer formula. This is why you try to get the number out of them in the beginning. This seller actually wanted a lot less for her property for a whole different set of motivations that had nothing to do with the property itself. And so, oh, goodness, sorry, 
dogs scared me. They were playing against the door. Um, <laughs> so um, I'm just going to let you guys know that, you know, it's going to look different at every property. No two sellers situations are the same. We did a lot of work helping this seller on things that were not specifically related to this property. Um, she wanted less for it. But I want you guys to understand what it looks like on a profit calculator and how this applies to the closers formula. When you're sitting there comping and you're saying, yeah, from what they're saying, if I put $30,000 into this property, it definitely can be worth four thirty. dollars So what she is asking either, and people have this question a lot, well, what if it's the, surely there's something more wrong? No, we, we continued the conversation. She had other motivations. She's like, I need to cover this, 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 and this. And yes, I want help with this, 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 and this. All right. So at the end of the day, you know, when you're running those numbers, no, no two are going to look the same, but more often than not, what you're going to get is that repair price is about 25 a square foot. That is true. But Straight up, this woman told us that the flooring had been updated. She told us what had been updated. The house was, and it was. It was clean, and it was very comparable to the comps. That doesn't mean you're going to go put $25 a square foot on every property ever. We were actually putting a good amount of cushion for the buyer with $30,000 for this property. This property did not need $30,000 worth of work. It needed like two gates fixed and a piece of flooring mixed and a piece of the roof fixed and, you know, things like that. Oh my gosh. I love you. I get, I get multiple coffees today. <laughs> um, but yeah, guys, I just want you to, I want you to see how it's applied. Right. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give you guys another example. If you want one. Um, and then it's going to be fast. It's going to be in Texas. Comping races. Yes. This live has been. Thank you to my biggest fan. Live has been the best one Cassie has ever done. Thank you for being a badass. I am a badass. So are you. Um, <clears throat> I love it. Donuts and coffee? You're right, Cleopatra. You are right. You are right. I should get donuts and coffee and not feel bad about it. It's Friday. It's raining. I'm in the holiday spirit of giving. And I just got $10 for my coffee and my donut. It's Keaton's birthday today. If you guys don't know Keaton, he is on our team. He is our in-house TC and we love him. And everybody gives Keaton a shout out. I don't even know if they have the volume turned up out there still. We're going on two hours and 12 minutes right now. But if they do, y'all give Keaton a shout out for his birthday. He is not one to, that likes to be um, publicly. He's not, he's not Mr. Uh, he took his birthday off of our company calendar twice so that we wouldn't. <laughs> I'm like, bro. You've worked for us for how many years? You think we don't know your birthday? You, were, I mean, he was, he did do a solid, he does have a solid point in that he might have gotten us to forget it. He's a little, he's our little prankster, our little jokester, and we love him and we celebrate the day of his birth. So, uh, anyways, Kristen made cinnamon rolls and I have yet to have one. So I'm on a need a donut. Mm, my biggest fan. Everybody tell Keaton happy birthday. <laughs> he will love it. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to call up this last property really quick. And then I'm going to open this up for questions for y'all for maybe 15 to 20 minutes. So I hope y'all have um, gotten your gotten your questions locked and loaded. Okay. So ready for me to zoom through this one. Y'all can comp along with me in future lives that I do. If I'm doing comping, 
and you're needing to put this in practice, then you have a profit calculator pulled up. Comp with me. Comp along with me if you can. Get to that point, right? So an excellent idea by our dear love and friend named Lori. If you guys don't know her from our community, you should. I'm just giving away all kinds of gold nuggets today. Come on, yo. What's going on? What's going on with, with the... Why isn't it? There, we'll just do it that way. It was being slow. See, sometimes technology slows you down. Um, so I'm looking at it. There's a park across the street. Definitely want to make sure there's... Oh, one thing I didn't mention. Schools being across the street can impact the value. Okay, so cool. We're not on a... We're not on this street that seems to be like... Yeah, it's like a normal residential street, right? We're not on the corner lot. Here's our property. Looking good. Let's get to that street view. Looks like a pretty normal neighborhood. Looks like my data will probably be consistent, right? I went to comp with you, but the numbers don't pull up in Zillow. Huh. Was it on that last one? Oh, it's because it's Texas. It's a non-disclosure state. Yeah. This is why sometimes I'm like, yeah, you can't really do that in Zillow. So about only thing you can verify is actives. I can steer you wrong. It really can. Okay. So one of the things I want to point out to you guys when you're comping and you see a public data and an MLS data, sometimes when you see that lower number, it's before rehab. So pay attention to the as is comps. This is going to be one of the last bombs I drop on you guys is you need to pay attention to the difference between an, a comp with the property as is prior to rehab. That could be super distressed. That could be clean and outdated. And you could be comping for that ARV, right? So you have different ranges of comps when you pull these up. Don't get lost in the weeds. Don't get analysis paralysis. Just try to follow. Look for the consistent data. Look for look for it in those orders, like and kind by distance, right? So you're following those rules. This is why I like these filters. A lot of times when you start to get into the lower square footage, half the dang old time, I just put zero there. Does that follow the comp rules I told you? No, because they're guardrails. <laughs> when you get into those lower into the hundreds, sometimes you're you're discluding that property that's 747 square feet instead of 750. I just put zero. I see what happens. You know, so sometimes I do crazy stuff like that. And, you know, it, it just helps me understand the market of that neighborhood. Okay. So I'm looking all around here. I've got comps on comps on comps. Look at this. So many comps. What don't I want to do? Oh, that looks like a busier road. It's a double blah, 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 blah. Oh, it is. It's a, it's a four or six lane road. Just looking at it that quickly. I want y'all to know, I know. I know the answer to this one. Okay. Um, I know that street. I'm just telling you from the terms. So for those of you who happen to know that I know that that street is X amount of lanes, I'm just telling you in the terms that I would use if I was comping and I was anybody anywhere in the nation. Okay. Um, I'm going through this. I'm within half a mile. Well, shoot, I can do one of two things. I can recognize that like a lot of my closest comps by distance are going to be right here. But man, some of, are any of them in the top 10 crossing that street? No. So I'm just going to, I'm not even going to bother with this tool where I don't cross that street. I'm going to look at my top 10. Okay. I'm going to 
uncheck those. If I check them, this is what it said. That doesn't make sense. Why is it so low? Oh, because some of the rents are posted on here. Got to pay attention. Maybe I should look outside of that top 10. Let, let me look for my first three, my first six, right? What do I have? What do I have? MLS sold 270. MLS sold 225. MLS sold 250. On my street, psh, MLS sold. Oh, public data said 266. Texas is a non disclosure state. I'm going to stick with that MLS number. 265. How many do I have right now? Four. I have four selected. Hmm, let me get a couple more comps. Wait, one of these things does not seem like the other. Why is this one selling for so much more? Maybe I'll look at that, but I'm going to let you guys know. I already know the answer. Do you want me to give you the answer or do you want me to show you? Because basically, I'm just going to give you the answer. Basically, when, I, when you go and you pull up that comp, it's like um, it's a different kind of home. Um, and it's really, really, really remodeled and it's like a two story and it has like these additional features and it's like a really weird outlier in a very, very, very consistent neighborhood. And so that is one of the examples of one of these things is not like the others. The only time I would usually select that comp is if I did select a really low comp to average it out and balance it and on my sheet. But I'm not selecting that comp and thinking that this property is going to sell for anywhere near that when the rest of my data is saying that this is going to be in that 250 to 260 range, right? So I am going with comp number six, okay? Now, I'm going to move over. I've got a three-bedroom, two-bathroom, 960 square feet, 964. 10.45, 10 or 11.45. Hmm. But the price per square foot is lower than the one that was smaller, right? This is why we don't calculate on price per square foot unless we have to. We let it average out. This is why you need to pick three to six comps, right? A lot of these are a little bit bigger, but a couple of them are two bedroom, two bathrooms, right? Or at least one of them right here. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I've got six properties selected. They average out at 253, let's just say. So I'm putting 253 in my profit calculator. Okay. I will have you guys know 253, this property needs a new fence, probably to be worth 253. And I happen to know that it is actually an expensive fence for this price range, but let's just go ahead and put 10 grand in there for the fence. And let's just say we want to make a little bit of money. This is probably what I would offer this seller. And this is the kind of seller that has to probably have another motivation to accept your wholesale offer. I know that because that seller is about to be me on Monday. <laughs> I am going to list this property on Monday for $240,000. I'm just letting you guys know because it needs to be a fence. I might list it for two fifty dollars and give a concession, but I'm just going to let you guys know that I have comped this on the MLS. I've comped it on batch. I've comped it on prop stream. Some little differences. Okay. Some little differences. Um, of course, I'm not going to accept an offer for 180. I don't need to eat those closing costs and holding costs for somebody to go hold till this and put a new fence in. But it's a good example for you guys to understand that you can comp in Texas and non-disclosure state with these comp tools uh, that we use that, you know, you don't like it filtering things the way that way and looking at them by distance and like 
understanding that you probably don't need to in a lot of scenarios in neighborhoods like these go to the 20th comp and look for the outliers did not spend the time to go through the photos with you guys on these comps and that's for today because again i'm showing you what we do and how we do it that marries with the closers formula to make us be able to comp things very very quickly what our process looks like okay i'm teaching you the basics here on this free live so um i want you guys to understand what that looks like does that mean every one of your offers is going to get accepted no no i mean in this case scenario you could have probably offered this it's a whole tale it's a whole tale to me i probably offered a listing to be honest with you i'll just be like this is a listing referral for this seller, unless they are motivated, motivated by financial distresses and things like that. So, um, I hope this was a really good example for you guys. Um, like I said, I'm not going away for forever, ever. Um, we do, we've been going for, uh, two hours and 25 minutes. I actually was going to try to keep this to around two hours to two and a half hours, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open up for a little bit of Q and a, cause I promised y'all I would. Um, we're probably going to go about 15 minutes or as long as y'all have questions. Maybe y'all don't have questions. Maybe you do. Um, I hope that um, I covered everything in a way that helps you to apply this to the closers formula. Um, I hope that it helped you understand how we do this nationwide, the principles that we apply, the guardrails that we apply, the way we do run numbers very, very quickly. Um, and we're considering the costs and expenses for the buyer, um, instead of trying to be extreme and say, well, then I'm going to offer 40% of the ARV because that doesn't work. 50% of the ARV doesn't work. You have to consider, um, you know, a general number for what it costs for people to get in to a property. You don't want to assume everybody's a cash buyer and, you don't want to assume that everybody has the most lending costs in the whole wide world. You don't want to assume everybody has the cheapest uh, contractor in the world. You don't want to understand, assume they have the the most expensive contractor in the world. Um, how that how that uh, profit calculator came to be. Um, we definitely could get into the weeds and talk about you know rehab costs and you know, what it's like to comp land and what it's like to, to, sorry, there is a fly in here that has been killing me for two hours and 26 minutes, y'all. Um, and it just landed right on my nose. Um, but we're not going to get into the weeds of those. So I want you guys to understand that, um, you know, a lot of those conversations aren't for a 15 minute Q and a, but I do want you guys to have a chance to ask questions that have come about, um, since you've, since you have, uh, been watching today's live. Um, so comment questions, comments, and concerns. Let's go. I'm going to scroll up a little bit because I've been talking and I'm going to read. I want to tell y'all, thank you for, thank you for watching. Um, I really hope, oh, thank you so much. Happy birthday, Keaton. I might buy Keaton a coffee with that. Thank you so much. Boop, boop, boop. These comps are guidelines, not rules. So we just do the best we can. Yeah, you definitely want to get in range. I mean, you don't want to be excessively wrong because then that changes the numbers. But if you guys practice on that profit calculator or whatever it is you might be using that's not as cool, um, <laughs> if you guys practice on that, your numbers aren't going to change like drastically if you're a few thousand dollars off on your ARV. You know what I mean? Um, your offer isn't going to change that drastically. And like I said, sometimes I've done it where it's like, ah, I'm trying to fix my profit and hit a certain profit on a, 
on a deal. Like maybe I just really need to change my rehab plan and maybe I don't need to have that special feature. Maybe I need to just, you know, find a little bit more affordable of a material, but still achieves the same thing. And I'm not narrowing my buyer's pool as a fix and flipper that way, you know? So there's a lot of ways to put this whole thing together. And like, I always tell people like no two look the same. So yeah, that is a really good point, Jeffrey. Um, oh, I don't have your comment pulled up. Just kind of like I went for a second without sharing my screen earlier, huh? Hope you guys have forgiveness in your hearts. <laughs> I don't think I showed anything crazy when, when I was talking and thinking I was sharing my screen for about two minutes. Um, but yes, that's a really good point, Jeffrey. Silver Sage is actually just a two lane road. Um, but yeah, it is a 235 and I'm not, I don't exactly remember that exact, uh, that exact comp or what it might be, how many bedrooms, bathrooms or whatever. But yeah, that's why sometimes it's like an average. I think we'll do really good listed at 240. And, um, the last time I checked comps on that was a couple weeks ago and it might be Christmas. It might not be a good idea to list at 240. It might take till January to February to sell it that. And we might just decide to go on the market at 235. I think I could honestly probably go to them on the market at 250 and go ahead and um go ahead and just give a concession for the fence for you know like five grand. Um and everybody wins, you know. I I think it will absolutely appraise for 250. I guarantee you that. I guarantee you that. And there's a difference. I want it to go move fast on the market as the seller. You dig? So I'm going to be competitive. I want it to go. Go, baby, go. I'm paying taxes and insurance. Taxes for properties in Texas are expensive. So when do I do as is comps for a situation? That's a really, really, really good question. You're in a market or a neighborhood that, oh, I love this question. Um, here, here's one example. You're in a market or a neighborhood where the numbers seem to maybe work out, okay? Because this happens all the time. And when people go nationwide, they make this mistake all the time. And it usually happens in lower end, like the lower, lower end neighborhoods and lower price points is what i mean by that for those of you who may not be familiar with my lingo um the lower end neighborhoods they definitely matter because if you're trying to add a wholesale fee on and i was saying earlier how this drives me crazy people lock a property up for ten thousand dollars and they try to sell it for twenty five thousand Fifteen thousand dollar wholesale fee, bigger than the dang old seller is gonna get for the property, and they wonder why it won't sell because they didn't look at the as is comps. So if I, as a buyer, can buy from you for twenty five thousand dollars and the numbers work, but I can go walk down the street and throw a rock and sign a contract with the person it hits for seven thousand dollars or ten thousand dollars. Am I going to buy that deal from you? Hell no. So you got to pay attention to those as is comps and those lower end neighborhoods. And then <clears throat> another great example is when you're talking to the sellers and they want a little bit much for their property. And you explain to them the properties that don't have this work are selling for this much on the market and they're not remodeled. They're selling for this range on the market and they're not getting their closing and hold, their closing costs and their holding costs paid for when they list it on the market. But do you want to list it on the market? So you've got to understand that this is based on values. And I, I talk to our sellers all the time. And one of the things that RJ doesn't say, ooh, I'm going to give you a queen closer. I'm going to give you a queen closer golden nugget right now. Okay. Are y'all ready for this? Ah, y'all are still staying tuned. Queen closer golden nugget. Okay. Is if 
I were to, ooh, this fly is driving me crazy, y'all. I say to sellers all the time, if I were to um, list this on the property, list, list this property on the market as is, you know, it would it would not sell. It, it would sell for for this price that you're asking, but you know, you're not going to get those closers, those, those closing costs covered. You're not going to get those holding costs covered. You're not going to get those repairs covered. They may ask you to do additional repairs that you're not considering, like to get lending for their lender to be okay with it. You know what I'm saying? Um, I, I talk to sellers about that all the time. RJ usually doesn't get into that stuff, but I will talk to a seller about as is comps like that. And my golden nugget is that I tell sellers all of the time, even when I don't dig into those things that we are offering you market value for the property in as is condition. That's how I use as is comps. We are offering you market value for the property for the as is condition. Now that's a technical term that a lot of sellers are not going to understand. And I then will sometimes get, get them into, well, this, these are our costs. We're offering you the value that your property is worth as it stands right now. Sellers eat that shit up. So that's a queen closer tip for you for today. You can get the calculator by emailing RJ Bates the third at titanium.investment. I will put it in the bottom of this comment. Press reply. Thank you for taking the time today. Thank you, Jeffrey, for joining. I'm so happy that all of you took the time. How did you get to $300,000 for the seller's price from three fifty four? dollars I don't know what you're asking because those are not numbers that apply to that property. I'm sorry. Two fifty four. How did you get to the three hundred? I don't know. I don't understand that question. I'm sorry, y'all. How did you break the sellers? You got to renegotiate without angering no one. Mm -hmm. How are we going to calculate the offer if we only have as is comps? Um, you're probably going to offer them as is minus the costs minus your fee. But I don't run into that situation that often, Jaime or Jamie. <laughs> you can get the profit calculator. I'll put it in the, in the realtor's fees, closing costs, capital gains, escrow. Yeah, all those all those things. Yeah, buyers have to deal with those depending on how they underwrite their their deal and their exit strategy. Absolutely. Thank you for so much of your help. How do you renegotiate without getting the seller upset? That's a great question. And I highly recommend that you go to some of the videos that RJ has done and I have done. Um, this is a great question for another um, video for us to kind of hone in on that. Um, but I will tell you the general generic answer to that, that I can give you in a decent amount of time is we do it based on math and facts. So nine times out of 10, it's because the rehab, the way that we run numbers, because we're very accurate and very practiced, um, our, our tools are sharp here. And the, the way that we nine times, nine times out of 10, if we have to renegotiate, it's not by a huge margin. And it's because we have a really unexpected rehab issue or, you know, 
our best buyer. We talk to them about, you know, the lending costs and just, we try not to have to renegotiate by a huge margin and we try not to, we actually are the opposite of a lot of our peers on this. Like if I was going to make X amount of wholesale fee, say it was $20,000 and we needed $3,000, a lot of my peers would, you know, go renegotiate by that $3,000 or try to renegotiate by $5,000 or this, that, or the third. We just don't do that. Um, we just eat it. We make 17 or we make seven instead of 10 or whatever that looks like. It is the name of the game. We're going to make sure we help the seller. We're going to make sure we help, you know, we don't go back to it unless there's a drastic difference. We don't go back to the sellers. You know, a lot of times it's because there's just unexpected repair cost, right? Um, but we, we always try to go back with a burden of proof, um, a number that got, that got slapped in our face, things like that. So that's a really good question. And we, we talk about that, you know, a lot through our various videos. And I think RJ went into it not uh, one of the past couple Tuesdays on the lives in here. Um, in a little bit more detail. Thank you, Robin, for all you do. You're precious, precious. Love your face. Profit calculator. I just put the email at the bottom of this feed. Hope you guys can see it. Oh, RJ, that's me. Am I RJ on here? He forgot to put all my info. Hey, if y'all want to follow me, my name is not RJ Bates III. My name is Cassie DeHaas. That's C-A-S-S-I-D-E capital H-A-A-S. You can find me on all the same places except for YouTube. I go live on RJ's channel. What's the record for the amount of contracts done during an in-person training with you guys? Uh, we recently just started um, doing that, implementing. Um, we've had only one of those boot camps. And I'm really excited about it, but um, five contracts sent. And we, we pretty much do eight hours. Which is which is really close to like our best possible numbers. Um, I think that a couple of those people didn't actually end up uh, signing the contracts in the end. So I actually should go do the KPIs on that. But we got to follow up. Boop, boop, boop. Are you in a particular price range now because of the interest rates or it doesn't matter? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, I mean, for me, one of the things for us and the best answer I can give to those kinds of questions are, I'll be honest with you, we get a lot of inbound on our lead gen. And if the comps and the market make sense, we do look at days on market. It's one of the things I didn't cover today. Um, but, you know, the market has a demand. The market has demand. So we're also nationwide. So, no, we don't really stick to certain price points. I mean, sometimes our price points are really low. And sometimes our price points can be certainly in like the six or seven hundreds, but I would say they're usually going to be sub 600 nationwide. They, they are usually not over that $600,000 mark. Now that doesn't mean I think you should do your marketing a certain way and think you need to know your market. Are you in, can you go over your comp filter presets? Uh, yeah, Patrick, I already did do that, but it's like 300 over and under a year within half a mile. It's filtered and sorted by distance. Yeah, if you know how to comp, 
Boom. Boom, baby. You got to know how to run the numbers, guys. All right, I'm going to filter back up through some old comments and see if I got any more. And then I'm going to call it. I'm going to call it a day, guys. I really want you to know. I really, really, really appreciate all of your questions, all of your engagement, all of your appreciation. Chelsea says, I have 17 deals that need comp. Do you ever deal with properties that are in more rural areas? We definitely deal with properties in more rural areas. It's a good question, Chelsea. All over the country, as a matter of fact. And people think we're the weirdos, but I'm like, yo, if I got buyers, there's a number. I did not use examples for rural properties, but hopefully my team is still listening. And that's another good comp uh, example for us to have down the line. Thank you, my friend. You're always such a big supporter of us. Keith, I don't know if you're still listening. So good to see you multiple days in a row. The true square footage is just under a thousand square feet. It doesn't feel like it on that house though. That house feels like it's at least 1200 square feet. I'm not going to lie. That floor plan was brilliant. No, no, Jaime, I don't do that unless I absolutely have to. Because that's why I have my filters preset. I do not, guys, I do not get the average price per square foot and multiply it to the subject property square foot. And actually, PropStream does that for you. So you can see it. Sometimes I just take the averages and add a little bit of money. I'm looking at mm, Thank you. Okay. Whew. My loves. My loves. I'm going to filter through all my many many comments um later today. I don't see Oh, I might have a new one. I very rarely get my beauty rest. <laughs> Girl, you know I'm gonna I'm gonna get that beauty rest this weekend. I need it every weekend. I have a day where I'm like, please, Lord, don't give me a reason to put on any makeup today. <laughs> I just want to stay at home. No makeup. Thank you so much. Love you. Thank you so much. I love you. You make me cry. Go time. Get you some of that, Patrick. Uh, anyhow, yeah. No, we we very, 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 very rarely mail a purchase and sale agreement. I would rather have somebody go meet uh, meet somebody that I emailed it to, a notary, a friend, the bank lady. <laughs> I don't, I don't often mail and, and very rarely, even if you do mail, does it ever work out? So, all right, guys, I, like I said, I appreciate you guys staying tuned. Um, keep, keep in touch, keep in this group, um, go apply this stuff, guys, keep getting better, keep finding the web, keep sharpening your tools so you can make sure you hit the web and, um, we'll see you on here next time. Have a wonderful day and a wonderful weekend. And happy holidays if I don't see your faces in the lives until after the holidays. Thank you and God bless. <laughs>